Well, everyone, Andy Sirich with Altera Software here, coming to you once again live from Microsoft Ignite in sunny Orlando, Florida. So I've got with me Tara Raj. How's it going? It's going great. Ignite's been a lot of fun so far. It absolutely is always fun. I mean, there's always something to do. There's something to see. I mean, sometimes I feel like a kid in a candy store here, you know, right? Yeah. I mean, given all the swag and everything like that, it's... It's a fun time. Right, exactly. We all like the swag, that's for sure. Well, the thing I want to do first is I kind of would like to have you introduce yourself and kind of tell the viewers, you know, who you are and what you do for Microsoft. Sure. Yeah, so my name is Tara Raj. I'm a program manager on the Windows subsystem for Linux team. And so that's what we'll be talking about today. Previous to that, I have worked on SQL Server on Linux. So as you can tell, there is a theme here of bringing Linux things into Microsoft. That certainly is very apparent these days. Microsoft has gotten to be very open source and very Linux friendly. And I mean, if I go back 10, 15 years, and I'm dating myself a little bit there, but um, my roots are kind of in Linux and open source. You know, before I was a Windows administrator, I was, you know, running Debian, uh, what was it, Woody? I think it was 3.0, and then Sarge was 3.1. Well, that takes me way back. But anyway, it's really neat to see the, the transition of Microsoft into the open source space. So. Um, but yeah, definitely, I thought it would be really interesting to have you on and talk about Windows Subsystem for Linux, because it's a really cool new technology. I could see a ton of applications for it, but first thing I wanted to do for the viewers is have you explain what it is and what the use case is, the intended use case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so starting with the what it is, the Windows Subsystem for Linux, which we call WSL for short, since right. it's a bit of a mouthful, right. is a way in which you can run genuine Linux environments on your Windows machine. And so this lets you run your favorite utilities, applications, and tools from Linux. It looks basically like a command line environment. So it's a genuine Linux command line environment. These are native binaries running directly on Windows. And it's also a very lightweight tool, so you don't actually need the overhead of a VM to go and use this command line environment. So you can use Package Manager, for example, right. you know, transitioning into some of the use cases now. Utilities like SedGrep and Awk. Oh, that's nice. And the best part here is really the languages and the frameworks that you're able to use. So let's say, you know, those of you who have used Ruby on Windows before, it's a lot of a setup process and right. it's not the smoothest experience. So here you can just use Ruby as its Linux version of Ruby. And so you don't have to go through that whole setup process that you would need to in Windows, for example. So it's all about making the two worlds coexist in a nice, easy to use fashion. Yeah. I mean, I really like that I have you know the core tools that I'm used to using, like you said, sed, grep, and awk. I mean, I, any Linux administrator, who, I, I don't think I've ever met one that doesn't use grep in some way, shape, or form. I mean, you grep everything, right? So, um, so yeah, definitely, it's really nice to see those tools come to the platform and be able to use them like that. Now, um, when the CLI presents itself, it's Bash, correct? Yep, that's correct. So the console shell and what you're seeing is a general con host that we use across PowerShell, the command prompt, and Bash. And so Ubuntu and SUSE and all those different flavors that we have have that same shell and the same rendering mechanism. But then what happens under the hood is that we're actually using WSL, which is this translation layer uh, okay. between user mode Linux, so you have your yeah, app, right. you have this translation layer, and then you have the NT kernel underneath. So this is translating uh, all the syscalls. Right, yeah, that's really interesting. I can almost see the logical layout in my, my mind. Okay, so that's really interesting how it's put together. Now, you mentioned all the different distributions, Ubuntu, uh, OpenSUSE, um, uh, there's a couple others, I'm sure, but those are actually in the Windows Store today, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so backing up a little bit of how this process works, of how you get started with WSL, you first enable the optional Windows feature. Right. And so once you do that, you'll have a machine restart. We decompress the WSL components for you. And then you go and you grab an app from the store that's one of these distros. So we have six distros in the store right now, Ubuntu, SUSE, Debian, are a few of them, Kali Linux, and so in there now. yeah, you can get one of them, you can get all of, all them, of them and run them side by side, but basically what, once you install that application, you then will unpack that application as well, and it's basically a tarball of the Linux distro that's oh, been packaged okay. up, so that gets unpacked for you, and then it runs on top of WSL. So you go through a setup where you'll set up like a username and a password, 
And then from there, you use it like you would the distro of your choice. So Ubuntu, for example, you can use Apt as your package manager. So that's really nice. Um, understanding how it works under the hood and it's very much how it would work if, if that was your main OS. Now, you and I were emailing about this a little bit and I thought it was, I was kind of going through the thought process of using it and I'm sitting there, I, I was uh, using OpenSUSE Leap 42, which is an older version at this point, Leap 15's out. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, Leap 15's not in the store. Can I, can I do a distro upgrade on this? And you sure can, and it works. Um, but I found myself asking the question, how, so being as it's an open ecosystem, how does the distro go from you know, the developers to the Windows Store? Can you explain how that process works a little yeah, bit? That's a great question, and we've tried to simplify this process as much as we possibly right. can because we know that many Linux distro maintainers might not be as familiar with the Windows ecosystem, right. like might not have ever created a universal Windows application before. Right. And so we have an open source project called the WSL Distro Launcher. So if you go to GitHub, it's github.com slash Microsoft slash WSL dash Distro Launcher. And basically, this project is a template for you to use where you can go through and create your Linux distro. So it's this tarball that I was talking about before. You package that, but you can also put some custom things in there. If you want to have tools pre-installed, or if you want to have certain features of Linux uninstalled, right. so for example, there might be something that is not compatible with WSL. Right. You can uninstall those on first run. You can also even have scripts that run on first run. All right. So that's really neat. So not only am I, I so I'm not limited to what's in the store. So I've got a bunch of friends who are crazy and like to subject themselves to installing Arc and Gentoo and a lot of those source-based distributions. So they can even go and do their, their own distribution with their own customizations and run it in WSL on their Windows machine if they want. Yep, and basically this process, what it does is it gives you a template, you pull it up in Visual Studio, you make whatever changes that you want to make, and then that bundles it as an AppX file. And so then that app package is really the app that you're seeing in the store. So if you want your own custom distro, all you need to do is enable developer mode on your Windows 10 machine and have sideloading available. And then you can sideload whatever apps you want. So you can have Alpine, for example, Gen 2, anything like that that you would want or your custom flavor of that distro. Gotcha. That's really exciting. A lot of, a lot of different options there. Um, where can people go to learn more about this if they don't know about it yet? Yeah, you can go to aka.ms slash learnwsl and also our documentation, which is on MS Docs, and the general documentation page, it's under Windows Subsystem for Linux. And this takes you through all these things that we're talking about here. What is WSL? Why you might want to use it? How could you manage your environment? And yeah. Sounds good, sounds good. I'll be sure to put links to all of those resources underneath this video so you have easy access to them. Other than that, Tara, I want to say thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. It's been great. Thanks for having me, and I hope you guys also enjoy using WSL. It's going to be fun. I know I'm going to enjoy it. So yep. thanks again. And thanks, everyone, for watching. And be sure to check out our other Microsoft Ignite-related videos. Have a good one.